Hi guys, welcome to this channel and welcome to this video. My name is Laura from Shamanic Self and this is going to be a continuation from the first video that we had around two or three weeks ago. Today I actually want to go through the meaning of Gaza and I found some pretty interesting material in regards to that. So first and foremost, I came across it when a friend of mine posted a different spelling of Gaza. So he's Muslim. I don't know if he's from Tunisia or a different country, but basically he wrote Gaza with an H. So typically it's G-A-Z-A -A, and he wrote G-H-A-Z-A. And at first I was like, what is that? What is the meaning behind that? Is there an actual meaning? Did he just do that because of censorship online or whatever? So I just started researching what Gaza actually means. And when you look up Gaza with an H, you come across something entirely different, which I feel is going to tie into all of this. So bear with me as we kind of dissect through these different meanings. First of all, you come across the Gaza thesis and the Gaza or Ghazi thesis from the Ottoman Turkish holy war or simply a raid is a historical paradigm first formulated by Paul Wittek, which has been used to interpret the nature of the Ottoman Empire during the earliest periods of its history, the 14th century, and the history to follow. The Gaza thesis addresses the question of how the Ottomans were able to expand from a small principality on the frontier of the Byzantine Empire into a centralized intercontinental empire. According to the Gaza thesis, the Ottomans accomplished this by attracting recruits to fight for them in the name of Islamic holy war against the non-believers. Such a warrior was known in Ottoman Turkish as a Ghazi, and thus this thesis sees the early Ottoman, Ottoman state as a Ghazi state defined by an ideology of holy war. And if you look at all of this, the holy land and everything, and I do think the land uh, holds potential energy, as we'll see later on in this video, holy war is really fitting for the name in and of itself. Um, the Gaza thesis dominated early Ottoman his historiography throughout much of the 20th century before coming under increasing criticism beginning in the 1980s. And historians now generally reject the Gaza thesis and all of that. But basically, it was formulated first in the 1930s by a Turkish historian and also the Austrian historian Wittek. And so they're still kind of fighting about whether or not this really existed. But I really do feel, you know, if you look at the Ottomans and everything they've kind of taken over, they've taken over every single thing in that area, right? They were in Jordan. They were in Egypt. They expanded all the way over. I don't even know how far into Western Europe, but uh, I'm sure someone here is going to know because I know we have a lot of history lovers watching this channel. Um, let's go into Gaza. So that's basically Gaza with an H. And... Then we're going to go into Gaza, just in general. What does Gaza mean? The word Gaza comes from the Hebrew Aza, loosely meaning strong city. The entire region is named for its capital city, which has been conquered many times over the centuries. Among its many rulers were the Philistines, which I discussed in the previous video. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet, because it kind of explains how this entire area has the energetic component of the Philistines and the Philistines were kind of of dubious origin, let's put it that way. The theme of strength is indirectly connected to Gaza in the Bible. According to the book of Judges, the superhuman strong Samson was imprisoned in Gaza by the Philistines before regaining his strength and destroying the temple of Dagon. And I don't even know if you pronounce it that way. It's D-A-G-O-N, so Dagon, Dagon. It's no coincidence that Philistine looks a little like, that Philistines looks a little like Palestinians, the modern day city of Gaza. The word Palestine is derived from a Hebrew word for land of the Philistines. 
And the word Philistines has taken on a derog derogatory sense in English, meaning a defiantly uncultured person, but it didn't happen in the Middle East. So when this was coined, this didn't even happen until the early 1800s. So before that, the Philistines had a different meaning. Now, Dagon or Dagon is a Phoenician and Philistine god of agriculture and the earth. He's also the national god of the Philistines. How interesting. So we have Phoenician and Philistines. And Phoenician is very much connected to other parts in Europe. And uh, Phoenician is all over. You know, you have the city called Phoenix here in the U.S. right now. So um, you can briefly talk about Freemasonic meaning all over the world. That could be one of them. But Gaza, also called Aza which is its Hebrew name, uh, Strong, a city on the Mediterranean shore, remarkable for its early importance as the chief center of a great commercial traffic with Egypt. It is one of the oldest cities of the world. So I came across another document saying it's actually the seventh oldest city of the world. How they came up with the seventh oldest is not entirely clear, but the number seven, I feel already has a meaning. Its earliest inhabitants were the Avims, who were conquered and displaced by the Kaphtorims, a Philistine tribe. In the division of the land, it fell to the lot of Judah. It was the southernmost of the five great Philistine cities, which gave each a golden emerald as a trespass offering unto the Lord. So this is, this is coming from a Bible excerpt, by the way. Its gates were carried away by Samson. Here he was afterwards a prisoner and did grind in the prison house. Here he also pulled down the temple of Dagon or Dagon and slew all the lords of the Philistines, himself also perishing in the rune. The prophets denounce the judgments of God against it. It is referred to in Acts so-and-so. Philip is here to take the road from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is about six miles southwest of Jerusalem, which is desert, the desert road, probably by Hebron, through the desert hill, through, through the desert hills of southern Judea. It is noticed on monuments as early as BC 1600. Um, BC 1600. Its small port is now called. El Mine. The Canaanites likely gave Gaza its name, which means strength in ancient Semitic languages. The Egyptians called it Gaza, which is priced city. In the Madaba map, a sixth century floor mosaic depicting the Holy Land, Gaza city is referred to as the seventh oldest city in the world. What is significant about Gaza? It has been inhabited for thousands of years and fought over by many, including Egyptian pharaohs, Babylonians, Philistines, and Alexander the Great, who besieged and captured Gaza City, Gaza City killing the men and enslaving women and children. So Gaza was rebuilt by a Roman general and granted to Herod the Great 30 years later. This is like just the history of Gaza. And throughout that period, Gaza maintained its prosperity. So Gaza has always been at war somehow. I just want to let that sink in because the energetic component of the land or the energetic component of what has transpired in the past, it's just keep coming up over and over again. Um, I also found it very interesting that you can find different types of Gazas all over the world. So you have the Gaza Strip, obviously. I'm just going to put up this picture here, which is basically uh, could could show one of those ancient scenarios that we just talked about. You have a Gaza in the village in the western Bika district, which is in Lebanon. Then... You have a Gaza empire in Southern Africa. You have a Gaza province in Mozambique and Gaza land, which is a region in Southern Mozambique and Zimbabwe. And then you have Gaza in Iowa, the United States. You have Gaza in New Hampshire. You have little Gaza 
in Anaheim, California, and you have the Gaza Strip somewhere in Anaheim Island, California as well. Um, you have a Gaza in Australia. Now it's called Klemsik. It's in South Australia, but it was renamed Gaza from 1917 into 1935. So yeah, it keeps coming up over and over again. So there are several different Gazas throughout the world. Um, here's a little bit of a story of Gaza. So just got to pull this up. Um, Gaza was historically a Christian village. Alexander the Great tried to invade Gaza three times through Jabalia. And actually Gaza prior to the war in 1967 was economically and socially thriving. It had a rich immigrant population between 1956 and 1966. So what keeps coming up for me personally, what keeps coming up over and over again is how um, how there are several, and this could be the scene between Goliath and David, which they're saying Goliath might be Philistine. So basically, you had all these different areas in the world. For example, 1967, pivotal year, because Gaza was taken over by Israel. And before that, it was under occupation of Egypt or it somehow belonged to Egypt. Cyprus, which is pretty much how many kilometers? 200 something kilometers from Gaza, very, very close to Gaza, in 1974 was taken over by the Turkish Empire or by the Turks in general. And it seemed like the 1960s and 1970s were pivotal years in a lot of countries. This was right after the World Wars I and II. And somehow in this vulnerable generation of people who were possibly still so confused and hurt by World War II, and it was kind of like this in-between phase. So Gaza in and of itself was an alternate world detached from the real, the real world, is what people were saying about Gaza. It holds so much history when you walk in the old town and anywhere you know it has existed for a very long time, um, Gaza kept getting destroyed and rebuilt, destroyed and rebuilt. Even before this entire conflict, it was always being destroyed and had to be rebuilt, destroyed and rebuilt. I felt it was a little similar to Jerusalem, except for Jerusalem was not as destroyed as Gaza possibly. But it used to have a lot of rich buildings and a lot of history. And now it kind of looks more like a concrete jungle. There's less space in Gaza today. There used to be orange orchids, green gardens. Those were cut down and sold for homes and houses. So even before this entire thing, even before 2020, there were those issues, obviously. Okay, so that's kind of what I had to say on Gaza. Now, if you go to the Greek meaning of Gaza, in Greek, it means the royal treasury, treasure, and riches. In Hebrew, the name Gaza is strong or a goat. And they have different variations of it. But also they're saying Samson might have very well been from Nazareth or that area. Just throwing that in as I'm going through my notes here. Um, Goliath was not a Palestine, but a Philistine warrior from Greece who lived in the city of Gath, which coincidentally is now part of Gaza. What is the spiritual meaning of Gath? City of Judah, the birthplace of Mika the prophet. Meta Morish means possession and Gath means wine press. Gath wine press, a city of the Philistines, typifies a belief in trial looking at all the experiences from the standpoint of seeming trial and suffering. And uh, they're saying that David could have acted insane in Gaza. So something else that I got when I was just reading on it, Gaza, sacred land, healing land, conflict and pain, ruled by a god or a lord okay so kind of like how i said if you just substitute every single time they say lord or god in the bible 
you just substitute it by a God or a Lord, the Bible is going to make way more sense to you because they're basically having all these different gods who are in charge of different areas of the world. They're mixing them together and just calling them one God, whereas it's several different gods. So it's ruled by a God or, or the Lord. Um, it could be Azak. I also got something with Azabaychan, so that somehow those areas are related or ruled by the same God. It could be one of the sky gods, whatever that even means. In my opinion, it just means that these gods are coming from different areas. And because these gods are basically just a different name for a really powerful soul who kind of has magic powers or technology we don't really understand, maybe they really did come from the skies somehow with whatever technology they had. Um, promised land, a treasury of insurmountable richness. And then I kind of saw that you're able to go down a very deep tunnel. But when I when I went down this tunnel to read further on Gaza, I kept getting sidetracked. They really did not want people to read on Gaza in general or kind of dig deeper into Gaza. Um, there were all these different paths leading into different directions. So kind of like in a confusing way, trying to mislead people who want to psychically read on it. Portals to other areas and timelines, which kind of seemed sacred. And the tunnel walls were filled with riches as well. And the way I saw the riches was literally like filled with everything, with gemstones, with gold, with all these things. And metaphorically speaking, for me, that meant it, there was something very rich in this area. A lot of buildings of historic value seem to have been destroyed in Gaza, or at least you can't really access them anymore, um, especially not right now. So I personally found that interesting. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had to say on Gaza for now. Let me know if there's anything you want to add and I hope you have a good day ahead. Thank you so much for watching and for listening and until then, bye.